Do I look at any sentiment indicators? Nah, not really. Nah, no, not really. The problem with sentiment indicators is during the best periods, like during the free money periods, when 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 they when you know the the, the, during the times where most of the money is made as a swing trader or a position trader, sentiment indicators and overbought, oversold indicators, they're gonna show excessively bullish sentiment versus like excessively overbought readings. So they kind of, they, they, they do work, but they could completely useless when you when you when there is the most amount of money to be made that's the problem look at last year and early this year you know if you followed these sentiment indicators you would have missed out on life changing money that's the problem but they do work sometimes that's why people use them and there's a guy on twitter that i follow um actually there's two guys i don't know which one of them is it the next big trader Kevin Martyr but one of them said you know he stopped using uh, sentiment indicators in the 90s because he saw the same thing when the life changing money is to be made the sentiment indicators will all show over, like uh, excessively bullish sentiment for months for months on end and if you sell or get out or, or out of the market or whatever go you know, take a step back during those periods, you're gonna miss out on life changing money. Soxel, I sold yesterday. I had like half size left. I sold the other half on the way up. I sold the rest yesterday. It's getting extended. I looked back, you know, this so Soxel is up 80 pre or it was up like 77% yesterday in what less than yeah, four weeks. And I looked back, it had never done uh, such a big move before ever so you know try to be a proactive and right now looks like we're gapping up hopefully we get a short on it doesn't have to pull back it can you know go sideways let the 10 20 catch up and go higher but there may be some short opportunity developing on this one you started your studies on breakout setups going to each going through each stock on TC2000. A good breakouts normally have an inside week preview. So your observation is that before a breakout, the stock usually has a tight range. Yeah, that's something I found too. VRAR, high tight flag breakout. Roblox, yeah, if you, yeah, buying it highs of the day, it's too high. <clears throat> I wouldn't buy it at the highs of the day today. It's gonna be a very wide stop. But maybe like if it takes out some intraday range, if it starts building higher lows for a few hours, that would be interesting. Because the volume is really good. It's a recent IPO, all of these things. Volume, it's already trading double the volume. The problem is the market is kind of extended, you know. Would have been better if it had had earnings like a couple of weeks ago. It would have probably gapped less and would have had better follow through right out of the gate. Why TTD was a good EP, took out the, like a two year range, had big volume, that's why. Institutions told you they wanted it. Like institutions literally told you, shit, we are buying to die this thing. All you had to do was listen. Well, and now we wait. Now we wait until the indices find some footing, get rid of the weak stuff from the portfolio and the next leg higher. If we get a next leg higher, I don't know. We gonna wanna be in the new strong stuff, the new leaders. I'm very happy that I sold all of AMD, even though AMD is still like 5% higher than I sold it. That's, you know, you gotta, if you play, especially if you're on March, you gotta see these things coming. You can't get complacent and think things will go, go up forever and ever. You, you gotta sell stuff. You gotta lighten up, especially the extended ones. They can pull back hard and fast. Yeah, and guys, don't forget your sell rules. R remember, like, if you want to catch big moves, you need to trail them with the 10 and 20. It can be short term painful. There's no guarantee they're gonna go higher, but you know, something like Mara, if Bitcoin keeps, like Bitcoin just broke out yesterday. 
from a, from a like a couple of like a month long base and they hit like all time highs, right? I I mean Bitcoin could easily go to a hundred thousand before year end. If it does, you know, Mara is gonna be at like hundred and twenty, right? So if you're long it from way lower, if you bought it right, there's no reason to you know get scared out of it. Trail it with a ten, trail it with a twenty. I'm using the twenty. Any stock is good to hold through earnings if you have a profit pattern. How else are you gonna catch a big move if you're not willing to hold through earnings? And you know, Mara doesn't trade on earnings. We already know what the earnings are gonna be. You trade some Bitcoin. Bitcoin goes up, Mara goes up. Bitcoin goes down, Mara goes down. It's more of a commodity stock. No, it's just all about waiting, see what bounces. Like Tesla is having a nice bounce, but I'm looking at this Tesla proxies kind of QS. Uh, Lucid, uh, not bouncing as violently, but they are bouncing. The reason Mara is pulling back is, you know, it kind of ran up. Like remember, Bitcoin is pretty much sideways over the past month, while Mara went up 55%. So it's it's pulling back, even though I think Bitcoin is up today. Or break even or something um, so it, it kind of got a little bit optimistic and now it's gonna pull back find support and if Bitcoin keeps going this will keep going too same thing with MSTR and all the others GBTC Beto and if Lucid starts showing right now it's trading with Tesla but if Lucid starts showing relative weakness compared to Tesla I'm probably gonna get rid of this one or at least size down. Same thing with QS. Uh, the Airbnb, if it closes like this, it's fine. But if it closes weaker than this, I'll probably sell it. Uh, all the other ones, this B is just a tiny position. I thought, you know, this reminds me of QS late last year. So I tried, tried to want to, you know, try to be getting early, tiny size in case it's, you know, gonna quadruple or quintuple or something. Uh, most things look pretty good. They're finding support on the rising moving averages. EMPH super strong. Couldn't even get below the 10 day. This is just so, so strong. FAS, if it closes lower than this, I'm probably gonna sell it. If it like takes out lower the day. And coin reports after hours. If it closes weaker than this, I'm probably gonna sell a bunch. If not all, I don't wanna risk a gap down or anything. And TTD looks like a champion. Well, yeah, the gaps get filled. Yeah, that has to be one of the dumbest things ever. The, the only way you believe it, if you haven't spent more, if you have spent more than six months in the markets, or did you know just you know just a few hours of studying the markets and stocks, you'll realize that's a dumb statement. One of the dumbest ever. Lucid showing strength against Tesla. Uh, not sure about that. Tesla's retraced, I don't know, about 40% of the move. Lucid has retraced about 40% of the move. Uh, yeah, the jury is still out on that one. What I was saying that it's super, this, these types of days are super valuable because you see what's holding up. You see the strength, it's so clear, you know. You just, you know, the stocks are telling you. All you have to do is to listen. Stocks are telling you what they want to do. Look at this Nvidia. Look at the pullback in Soxel and AMD. And now look at this Nvidia. It's holding higher lows. Now, what does that tell you? Take a wild guess. 